I was a teenager of 16, but uh, quite seven or eight of the fellows in Shadville were 16. One was only 15 years of age from Atlone. His mother collected the children's allowance on the Friday here in Atlone in the post office when he was fighting for his life in Shadville. Uh, I remember uh, Friday the 15th, uh, there was a blackout here, uh, and it became known as Black Friday for that, and also the fact that the Evening Herald uh, reported that night in the papers that the company had been massacred, 20 officers executed by firing squad. Uh, so the next morning, the wives of the uh, officers uh, came to my mother's house here in Atlone and uh, we were trying to figure out how could we have funerals without bodies and so on. Uh, all this Saturday was a bad day. Uh, then on Sunday morning, the word came that uh, they were all alive. I got on my bicycle that the army had given me and I dashed around to the various housing estates to tell the story. Nobody had phones in those days. My mother had a phone. And so I got the word and dashed around and started telling people they're all alive, they're all alive. And uh, it was quite tense, emotional, uh, obviously, at, in those days. During captivity, I remember the army here, apart from the heavy bicycle they gave me, they gave me an old tape recorder, one of the spool tape recorders. And I went around to the various houses and uh, took uh, recorded messages, tape messages from the wives and children. Uh, I'd write on a piece of paper the order that uh, they were to be listened to, so sent up by Red Cross, my dad would call them into his tent or his room or whatever it was, and he'd play it in the order that they were, uh, that I had written down. Then after that, uh, my father would tape over it and send it back with a letter for me, Leo, number one, a sergeant, this, number two, a sergeant, that. And I go back to the houses and play them for their uh, families, and I've met some of the children of those families here today, and they remember it. It must have been very emotional, the, the reaction to those tapes, hearing those voices. It was, it was. I used to have to step out of the room while they were listening because they start crying and things like that, with emotion and with happiness. And I have those tapes, the return tapes, I have them all, I have them now on CD. And they're, they're quite emotional to listen to now after 56, 57 years, you know. When my father was on his deathbed in the hospital in Galway, uh, quite a number of his old soldiers, dressed like they are today with the barrettes and so on, they came and stood at the end of his hospital bed and saluted him and so many of them turned up at his grave and I was introduced to the wife of one of them who uh, met my father, she was a fiancé here and my father said don't worry I'll bring him back to you and he did and consequently he and his wife turned up at my dad's funeral to tell me this. Um, for years afterwards it's interesting to note that um, my father and the most senior NCOs that he had they were all cutting his turf with him every year and saving his turf, bringing it home to his uh, shed, packing it in the shed and then go, my mother would cook them dinner. You know, you had that kind of bond had built up between my dad and the top NCOs.